Hi friends, thank you for joining me on this video. Today we will talk about SD-WAN, how it is implemented on 40 gate firewall and the behavior of SD-WAN when it is implemented on 40 gate firewall. So let's get started. So here's my firewall. Let me just show you the interfaces. So this is my interface one, port one, WAN one, and this is my port three, WAN two. So I cannot have two ISPs because I just have one ISP. So I will demonstrate what will happen if one ISP is going down with respect to the SD WAN. So if you go here under SD WAN, you will see this where you have to enable the feature add the member i'm going to add ran one first Okay, I have uh, defined two members for this particular SD WAN, WAN1, WAN2 on port one and port three. So if you go here, performance SLA, you have to create a SLA, instructing the device what to do when one link goes down or when you should payload the links. So I'm going to name it as SD WAN. And I'm going to use a ping to detect the reachability participants are RAN1, RAN2. And then I don't want to enable this. Maybe in production environment, you can uh, choose the latency jitter. I'm going to use the packet loss threshold. So I will uh, define here if there is two packet loss. Um, just failover from van one to van two. This is uh, the static route update, I believe, for SD van. All right, um, we are done with this. Okay, so I have uh, given the threshold as two packet loss for the failover criteria. Let's save this. So now you can see my port three internet is active. So now here you will have to define what will you do with the SD WAN, the two ISPs that you have? So I'm going to put, I'm going to treat port uh, three as 100 because I don't have uh, two ISPs with me. This is just the lab environment. So maybe if you want, you can distribute the traffic based on volume, say 30, 70, or 50, 50. I guess the maximum value is 2.5. So now you have to create a policy. The source is going to be all. I don't want to associate any user group. Destination is going to be all. Protocol any. Best quality 
this should be uh, selected properly. So I want port three to be my primary interface link, and then port one to be the secondary interface link. And I'm going to set the criteria for the failover. So this was the profile that I created for the failover. So I'm associating that profile. Now, as you can see, I have a policy that defines the SD WAN criteria. If you see here, um, port three is active. So let me go back to the policy and create a new policy. On the network, you will see SD-WAN interface under which you will find port one, port three. Let's define a static route pointing to SD-WAN. You don't have to specify the gateway because uh, if you remember in the beginning of this video, we defined the gateway of ISP1 and ISP2 while configuring the SD-WAN members. So let's go back to the policy, create a policy. From port two, I have a machine which is connected to port two. Outgoing interface will be SD WAN, source is going to be all. This is just for the demonstration purpose. I'm going to do NAT with the outgoing interface. You can call it as uh, interface based NAT. Okay, now the entire traffic is on port three, which is my LAN two. You can see both the interfaces are up. Now I'll get back to my Ubuntu machine to check. You can see here my IP is 192.168.2.5.13, which is connected to the firewall interface 255.4. So you can see I'm able to reach the internet. So you can see here uh, the source initiating the traffic.
let me show you the mat just to make sure that we are hitting the proper interface if you see here the outgoing packet is taking 161 or three is a interface IP. So which clearly says that it is uh, going out via my secondary ISP, which is this. So now I'll go back to my machine. Now, if you see here, I have shared my internet for uh, VMNet 8, VMNet 0, okay? This is the interface on the firewall, which you will be able to see as uh, run to let me just quickly show you so this is my interface vmnet zero on which right now i have uh, internet connectivity so i'm going to stop that and force the device to send the traffic onto uh, VMNet work adapter 8. Which is this one. So now if you see, you will be able to see this. Mm, this is just an internal error where my DHCP is not being enabled on this particular machine. If I diagnose this, the system must fix this issue. All right, let's see. So now you should be able to see the traffic flowing properly. Okay. Now if you come back to firewall, you will be able to see the firewall automatically changing the link from WAN2 to WAN1. 